So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another special video. And I know I still have to make the video on taking one sign, okay, or one asc or ascendant and one zodiac sign and showing you predictions from it. I will do that. I'm, I'm trying to um, kind of work it out in a way where I'm not, you know, making dramatic negative predictions because regardless of the zodiac signs there will be these negative predictions again i'm always like walking on this rope in the middle of two hills you know it's like you just can make those stupid mistakes that can karmically impact an individual in a dramatic way and this is based on the question that i put out on my youtube post that hey what video should i make and i know i haven't made it yet i'm just kind of pondering how I should approach it. So anyway, today let's talk about Saturn. Saturn. And this stemmed from a lot of people asking me from the last video that I made of Venus, the secret of Venus and Jupiter. Okay. And if you haven't watched it, watch it. So this is very, very interesting, very significant. So just like we were putting Venus in the Ascendant, Jupiter in the Ascendant, and I talked about, hey, blessings of a Guru comes through when you touch their feet. Because 12th from Venus and Jupiter will be their feet. It'll be a place where you get the blessings. Because especially in the Hindu culture, Whenever some elder comes into our home or we meet somebody elder, the first thing we do is we go and touch their feet. Whether it's a grandmother, whether it's your senior uncle, grandparent, and you touch their feet. Okay? And there's a whole science behind touching the feet. But the main thing was is that we were putting that in the ascendant of the birth chart. We were, we were using planets as human beings. We we're using planets is that as if we are giving them a reading. So if, if Venus came for a reading, how would you look at Venus's life? So same thing. You put Saturn in the Ascendant. That means, where are the feet of Saturn? It'll be 12th from where Saturn is, right? Because we are putting Saturn in the Ascendant. 12th house becomes the feet of Saturn. Now, what is the one thing we know about Saturn and its feet? Is that Saturn has an Achilles injury to his feet. Saturn lags. Saturn can't walk in a normal manner. This is why, because of the fact that Saturn takes 30 years to orbit around all the zodiac signs around the sun, in a way, we said Saturn is slow. Saturn takes time. And this because of the fact the feet are injured. So now if you look at Saturn itself, Saturn's feet will be the 12th house from itself. That means the 12th house from Saturn will take time. Will take time to achieve. Will take time to develop will take time to accomplish. So for example, you have Saturn in the third house. What becomes 12th from Saturn? The second house of wealth and money. So it clearly shows that early in life, a person will struggle. A person will have to deal with all kinds of ups and downs with money, family, nourishment. But once you mature, as Saturn matures, and Saturn maturity, okay, as much as they say it's 36th year, it actually starts from the 33rd year. Saturn maturity kicks in at 33rd year. And 36th year is where it reaches its maximum height, its climax, before it becomes steady. Now, why is that? Again, put Saturn in the Ascendant. Saturn is always exalted from the ninth place from itself. What is a Multracon sign of Saturn? 
Aquarius. What is ninth from Aquarius? The exaltation of Saturn. And so the ninth house naturally becomes the 33rd year in our house progressions. So this is why that maturity starts from 33rd year. So it shows from 33rd year will be the start where Saturn starts lessening its effect of that drag and now helps you to catch up in life to a certain speed. So this is why you will see 12th from Saturn will always take time and it obviously will frustrate you you know it is going to dampen your spirit but if you just knew this one simple thing of Saturn and its feet you'll be realized okay until I have learned certain lessons until I have grown to mature to a certain maturity where I can understand why these things happen to me you know only then I can then move forward so wherever Saturn is, you know it's going to take time to achieve that particular thing. There's something very important also with 6th and 8th from Saturn. For example, Saturn is what? Saturn is a servant. It's here to serve. What is the natural 6th house? 6th house is a house of serving people. Right? It is the original sign of Virgo. So sixth from Saturn is something you will have to serve whether you like it or not. Because Saturn is what? Saturn is a karma. Saturn is your karma that you are here to deal with and perform. So sixth from Saturn shows where a person will have to serve. Now this, this may not be just a short thing. It's not like a one planetary technique. You have to see what sign is there. What planet is setting there? And if especially you take the ascendant degree of your chart, whatever the ascendant degree is, put that in sixth from Saturn. Those are the particular things that you will have to serve. Unless you serve that, Saturn will not be satisfied with its service in your chart. It's that simple. That's how simple the, you know, these things are. And again, you know, unless you spend time in solitude, spend time alone, not being impacted by the world, not being impacted by, especially nowadays, social media, you have to kind of like zone it, zone in into your original self. And then you start finding all kinds of things. It's like astrology just blooms. And of course, some of these techniques, you know, the late A.V. Sundram, my interactions with him on social media, personal interactions. I mean, he gave me such beautiful techniques. It's unbelievable. And I've actually discussed those techniques on my Keras vlogs on my academy, Magha Vedic Astrology Academy. He gave me six techniques. And he didn't want to give me any more. He said, you will figure them out. And once I started figuring them out, I started talking to him like, okay, so the, how about this? How about this? How about this? So, yeah, that's why I dedicated my documentary, you know, Solitude documentary in the very end, if you saw the credit, dedicated to my great friend, A.V. Sundra. You know, I remember when I made the video on Venus and Dharma, I think this was 2018, 2019, when I talked about how Venus rules the middle nakshatra of all the fire signs. So it's not Jupiter that represents the Dharma. It is Venus that represents your Dharma. Venus represents the duty that you are to do. And that's when I got the most amazing comment from A.V. Sundram on my FB, on my Facebook. And so, you know, it is, it's the people that come in your life and it's just contemplation. You got to contemplate if you want to just learn the beauty and the painting of astrology and Jyotish. Okay.
Um, now, of course, I can discuss everything with the Saturn in the Ascendant, but of course, I don't want to say things that are negative because, of course, everybody has negative things. But I can I, I put myself into a 20-year-old, 21-year-old, 18-year-old person who is watching me because when I used to read books, you know, at 2021 20, of astrology and I used to read some of these things, I didn't want to learn them. You know, I remember my uncle sent me all these books because he's a Lal Kitab uh, expert for the past 45 years. And his one wisdom on the journey of Lal Kitab and why I shouldn't pursue it was probably the greatest gem in my life. But I understand that psyche of uh, what happens when you're 20 years old and you're listening to somebody on YouTube or you're listening to somebody or reading somebody's book, boy, it impacts you. And that's the karma that comes back. This is why astrologers have the heaviest, uh, you know, uh, life to deal with. Unless you're sensitive with these things. It's not about impressing the cr people, imp um, impressing the crowd with this technique, that technique. Because I've already, it's kind of like it was in me with all the time. Like never say negative things. Because I've been to astrologers who said a lot of negative things. A lot of things that never actually panned out. Yet it would put a fear on me. It put impacted me psychologically. And if it didn't impact me psychologically, you know, I wouldn't go so deep psychologically into astrology. So in a way it worked out because I wanted to know why did they say this? Why did they say this is a negative thing is going to happen? Like several astrologers told me, I'll never get married. I will never get married, never meant for marriage because of certain planets. And I'm, I, and I, and because of that, I, I had given up at the age of 28. I'm like, yeah, probably I will not get married, never have children, nothing. And, you know, and this is why, you know, um, we are so young in astrology. We are such amateurs in astrology that we shouldn't be really saying certain things that, that can impact somebody unknowingly. You know, uh, if you love astrology, you know astrology, keep it to yourself as long as you can like, you know, here's the thing. This is the most important thing that I think I have learned in my life. It, it's not about, you know, giving money to someone. It, it, it's not about, you know, showing love to someone. You know, what's the biggest positive karma you can achieve through which you can achieve moksha? Kindness. Showing kindness is the most Important thing, so somebody who does meditation eight hours a day, does bhakti nine hours a day, yet refuses to serve a person uh, who is completely against their belief system. That person is suffering, but oh, they're doing this, this, and this. But if because of that, the person who is an atheist, person who is an atheist, who hates religion, hates spirituality, yet serves because they want that kindness to go into the world, I guarantee you they'll be the first one to enter into the doors of God. Then the person who is doing all kinds of penance yet has these certain ignorances in their life. So you have to be kind as an astrologer. You have to kind of like think about that teen, that, that girl in mid-20s who could be listening to you and you may be right, you may be wrong, your thing may not work, may work, but it can impact that. This is why I don't seriously always go other, uh, into things because I know so many things, so many techniques. That Why do you think I stopped doing childbirth reading? I used to do childbirth reading, I stopped it because I, the, I saw so many charts where certain planetary alignments and certain planets from another planet, I'm like, this is going to be a very difficult thing for them to have it. And I, I just couldn't, come to telling them that you may be thinking oh you should tell them it's their karma and they will understand this you need to guide people the right way oh no 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 uh, until you have reached a certain level of maturity and certain level of understanding about the world about the essence of an existence of life forget it you don't know and i only understood it now in my 40s 
I only understood it now. Again, I can, again, I'm renting, I'm digressing, but I just wanted to give this one thing of, if you can do this, I'm giving you the most important technique in the world to just get astrology without any books, without anything, without anything. I just have given you the greatest thing. All right. So anyway, guys, if you're new to my channel, subscribe below. And if you want to know where your Saturn is placed and all your astrological details for that, check out the links here, including my consultations and link to my academy, Magavadik Astrology Academy, where I teach all the things related to astrology. So anyway, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.